Testing, one, two, three, a eh? very good day everybody. My name's Callum from uh, DX Commander. Now, I get uh, a lot of people say, what's the ideal length of coax? What coax do I use? Coax, coax, coax. So first of all, I've got four major tips, well, maybe six if we, if we count them all up. If you've come from a CB background, you might have the opinion that there is a particular length of coax which is right for your frequency. I promise you that is a myth. Only because impedance repeats every half wavelength less velocity factor. I'll show you that right at the very end, what I mean by that. So there's, there's four key things really for me. The first one is the frequency. Okay, so what frequency is the highest frequency, right, that I'm after? Because the higher in frequency go, the more loss you've got on the coax. I've got two big runs of coax into my development field, and they're the most expensive I could afford because I didn't quite know what I was going to put up there. Just about do VHF and UHF at the lengths I'm after. Then what we can do is we can use some basic coax loss calculators to work out if we are comfortable with that sort of loss. So if you go on the internet, and I just, I mean, I'm sure there is plenty of tools available for this. I just do coax loss calculator. Oh, there we are. Uh, I don't know. I haven't picked this one before, so this might be quite interesting. Uh, line type, okay, well, we'd need to know what all these are, and I don't know, but let's just take an average RG58. Uh, C, whatever, whatever that is. It's just showing you what we're on about here. Now I'm into meters, you might be into feet. So I'll just say if you take 30 meters and, and multiply it by three and a bit, you end up with 100 feet. So a 30 meters and 100 feet is about the same. So oh, we'll do feet. 100 feet, about 30 meters. And the highest frequency we're after, let's say is the two meter band. 145, 146 megahertz, depending on what part of the world you're in, and we'll give it 1.2 SWR, and we'll put 100 watts into it. 100 watts, base station on FM. And if you look at the right here, we'll see we've got some loss, okay? The total loss is six, just over six dB. Now, I've done, I've done a video about dB, so I know that six dB is you lose half your power and then half your power again. So let's just have a look. There we are, power out. If it was half and half, we'd be 50, it'd be 25 watts. It says here it's 21 watts. So you'd be transmitting 21 watts out of your 100 watt radio. Same on receive, you'll have a 6 dB, well, 6.7 dB loss as well. So uh, don't just, as a lot of people say, oh, there's nothing wrong with RG58. Well, there's not if it's that big, right? <laughs> But there's a hell of a lot wrong with it to use it for a run, right? And to get a man out or to get your ladders up and to put a, some sort of base station antenna on. I mean, let's have a look. RG58 at, let's say, 27 megahertz. What happens? Well, we're losing half our power because we're only getting 54 watts out. So it's, it's just, un, just, just under 3 dB, look. So RG58, I promise you give it a miss unless it's for a short run, a little pigtail between A and B, all right? So, and last thing is let's just have a look at the minimum. The minimum I would use, I don't like RG213, but the minimum I would use is this at 27 megahertz. That's the 10 meter band, 11 meter band. You see how it's gone up to 78. So that's not too bad. The loss is only um, just over a dB. Okay, interesting that if you come down to let's say the seven megahertz, seven point two, we'll give it seven point two, two megahertz, which is the forty meter band, you'll notice that there's a hell of a lot less loss because well there is. <laughs> so what we have to do is when people say what's the best coax for this or whatever, is what frequency is the first thing and the second thing is how much loss am i prepared to accept all right once you've got the loss you're prepared to accept i mean i spoke to a big vhf uhf guy who is comfortable accepting 3db because he's got a particularly long line he's got to go up a tower as well he's got about 3db loss he knows that so well if he wants 100 watts out he just puts three uh, 200 in 
right? Because that's 3 dB, it's double. And he's got a, a receive preamp to soak up the difference, all right? So you can get away with it if you know what you're doing. All right, we still haven't got which coax, have we? So once I've decided that the minimum I want is RG213, then I start looking at other things. So let's have a look now at, for instance, Messi, I'm not selling anything here. Pay a loan. Messi in Poloni. Uh, coax. This is how to read somebody's coax charts. Okay, let me accept it. I haven't been here, so let's have a look. Okay, so this is how you'd read just a data sheet from some manufacturer. Wavelength, 85 meter band, three and a half megahertz. Right, feet and meters. So let's take, uh, we were doing 50 meters. There's 50 meters, which is 164 feet, it turns out. And then we would look down for the band. So two meters, 144. Looking down here, I've got a useful output of 57 watt. Doesn't tell us. It's, it's, <laughs> it's funny this, isn't it? This is treating us like imbeciles, okay? Because I haven't got the dB loss, but as you can see, it's about two and a half. It's nearly three dB at that frequency. So if I come down frequency-wise to um, wavelength 28, just sort of CB-ish, 50, 78. So we end up with 78% of our, which, I mean, if I was getting 78 to 80%, frankly, I can cope with that, all right? So you've got a trade-off between the frequency, uh, the length, and we kind of done that, and I've shown you how to read a couple of tables. The next thing is, I'm particularly interested in the connectors. So this happens to be, ooh, so this is SSB Electronics, ASL7, I think, yeah, ASL7. And you can see the construction It is a PL259, but it looks like an N-type construction. There's a rubber gland in there, rubber grommet. It all screws together, it's waterproof once it's on. The thread isn't waterproof. As I have proved, I'm making a video at the moment, where my two meter station is completely trashed because I forgot to put some Vaseline on the threads. My own fault. Um, so now these aren't 10 a penny, all right? The old days of RG21, crappy RG213 with those PL259s, you know, 10 for a dollar or whatever it is, with all that soldering and braid and everything else. I've done a couple of videos on how to fit these very modern PL259s, but I'm particularly interested in all the quality of the PL259 that I can buy for my coax. So the, the four coaxes I personally recommend as a minimum would be the seven mil version, seven millimeter version, which is just over uh, six millimeters, quarter of an inch, just over a quarter of an inch. Messi and Poloni do a seven and a 10 mil, and SSB Electronics do um, air cell seven and uh, Flex, ASL, ASL, they do a 10 mil, all right? And then they do EcoFlex. They do EcoFlex 10, and then they do an EcoFlex 15. Now that's quite expensive. I bought a 100 meter drum, which is 330 something feet, but that was something like six pounds a meter. But they're the two main runs to my antenna field. One was for HF, transmit, and one's for, uh, was for VHF. But <laughs> I just had donated to the channel a hundred, I can't tell you who, a hundred meters of uh, LMR, L, LBF 450, something like, in, I think it's seven eights, massive run. I don't know how we're going to get it to the field, that's the only problem. But anyway, so we've got our frequency, we've got our length, we've got to make sure that the coax we buy, we can get some super nice, easy to install connectors. And then you've got to fix your budget because you might say, oh yes, that uh, that um, Ecoflex 15 Callum was talking about, it's absolutely perfect. So let's just have a quick look at that actually. Ecoflex 15, DX shop does it, here we are. This is who I bought it off myself. I didn't get a deal, but never mind. Ecoflex 15 plus, mm, is that what I bought? I don't know, but let's view it. 10 pounds a meter, that's about 12, $13. Now is there a lot, here we are. So this is how to read a loss chart. So I'm over at the right-hand side of this screen 
and immediately I'm going to do, say, on average, 10 megahertz. My loss for 100 meters, 300 and something feet, at 10 megahertz is less than 1 dB, all right? If we go right up to the 2 meter band, at 100 meters, it's, woo, what am I doing? It's 300 and uh, 3.23 uh, dB, just over 3 dB for 100 meters. And I'm into probably about a half 75. So I will be losing half my power there. It doesn't have a particular spec for 28 megahertz, but if you look at 50 megahertz, 100 meters is 1.87. 10 meters or 30-ish feet is gonna be 0.18. So that's why I chose Ecoflex 15, other than the fact you've then got to fix your budget. Do you go, oh, I've spent 500 pounds on this radio and you want me to spend 600 pounds on the coax. But unfortunately, the antenna and the coax is more important than your rig. Most radios can do anything, I promise you. If, you, if you're just gonna lose all your, all your power in the coax you receive and you transmit, you know, that's no good for man or beast, is it? If you're in Europe, SSB Electronics and Messi and Poloni, and I know in the US, you've got all the traditional stuff, LML 400, and there's some Times, Andrews, there's a few companies, you know, that do. If you're actually looking at seven eighths and one inch hard line and that sort of stuff, you're not even watching this video, you know what you're after, okay? But just beware of RG58 and RG213. And by the way, not all RG213s are the same, all right? There's some real RG213 and you'll pay good money for that. And then there's some really cheap, nasty stuff. It's the size of RG213, but it isn't. I was gonna talk about velocity factor briefly just before I go. So let's get one of my books out. I might have to refocus the camera that's above me. I'll have a look in a minute. Velocity factor, quarter wave. So, so if you've got some antenna, well, you see me there. You've got some antenna here, right? That's the ground, it's just some vertical, right? And we've got some coax. What will happen is, uh, and let's take, because a lot of these companies quote velocity factor. So I'm just downloading this data sheet as well, and I'm gonna have a look at velocity. Here we are. It says it here, velocity. I'll just zoom up for you guys. Velocity factor, it says, 0 0.86 so ecoflex 15 has got a velocity factor of 0 0.86 well, what does that mean so sometimes when we're making a phasing harness or whatever else we specifically want to cut the, the coax in exact size now i'm just going to tell you what i use on holiday and why i use it so in the main i like to take with me a half wavelength of coax on the 80 meter band. So roughly 80 meters happens to be 3.75 megahertz, right? Because I know if I take a half wavelength of coax, it's gonna repeat every half wavelength at that frequency, every wavelength of the 40 meter band, every two wavelengths at the uh, 20 meter band. And I know that every half wavelength if, you, if I've got a, a 50 ohm, whoops, he said degrees there. If I've got a 50 ohm, exactly a 50 ohm antenna here, it, I can put any length of coax on that, 50 ohm coax on there, and I will read 50 ohms at the other end, okay? If I'm actually got, let's uh, I'll just use a different color. Blue. If though I've got a 45 ohm antenna there after half a wavelength what happens and i actually don't know how this happens so you can't quote me on it but something happens to the impedance it goes up and down like a sine wave and i think this is where we need um smith charts but ignoring that i happen to know at exactly half a wavelength we get a repeat here of our 45 ohms because if you measure it at various points, it may be below or above that. And in fact, it's really cool stuff you can do on matching sections with coax stubs, but, and that's not today. So what is this velocity factor? So let's just take 40 meter band. So 
um, um, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take we'll take a 7.38 because I happen to know that's exactly 80 meters. So half a wavelength of 80 meters is going to be 40 meters. However, I don't need 40 meters of coax for my exact half wavelength. I would divide that. Well, actually, I'd multiply it, but divide that by the velocity factor. So 40 meters times 0 0.86 which is our velocity factor. We put it here and we'll do that on my calculator, wherever my calculator is, 40 meters, exactly 40 meters. Actually, the 40 meter band is actually 42 meters on average, 42 times 0.86, 36. That's why I always take 36 meters of coax with me. But if you are from the CB world and you are convinced that you need a very particular length of coax, you are in uh, myth world, I promise you, unless someone has specifically designed an antenna that needs a particular length of coax, but bear in mind, it would have to be a particular velocity factor as well, okay? I think you find, doesn't matter. All right, so to recap, we've got the frequency we need to pick, um, the loss you're prepared to accept, the budget you have, right? Because it's pointless, you're going, oh yeah, <laughs> I'll do all that, but I can't afford it. And in my opinion, what connectors you want. So you can buy cheap, but you'll be buying it again, I promise you. Some of my coax is years old because I bought the best that I could afford at the time, and it was a lot. I bought some of these connectors I've used several times. Taken them off, look, this, this patch lead's probably got smaller and smaller and smaller, and I'll probably go, oh, scrap now. But I'll remove the, con uh, the connectors and reuse them. You can't do that with ten a penny ones. All right, so uh, stick around for more stuff we'll do on this, and I'll see you on the next one. Uh, bye for now.